Hal Jordan's ego is so big that we needed two episodes of Geek History Lesson to cover it. So buckle in, you highballs, for Hal Jordan Green Lantern Part 2, as your Geek History Lesson is now in session. Welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Green Jeans Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or ring bear from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And today's a part two, so I hope it's not your first lesson. Go back to last week's. Yeah. Now, this, of course, is Hal Jordan Green Lantern mm-hmm. part two. Before you listen to this episode, we highly recommend you listening to part one. Don't worry. We'll wait. Okay, you're back. Thanks. Uh, Welcome. How do we sound? Different? We we sounded. Di- what the hell do you mean by that? We sounded different. Oh, come on, get over it. <laughs> All right. uh, it's a little conversation between me and the listeners right there. Uh, this episode, of course, uh, they didn't know it was going to be a two parter, but the people that requested this episode are the same people that requested Hal Jordan Part One. I'm going to assume they also wanted a Part Two. Nice. Uh, that is James Steinberg and Tobias, Ethan Isaiah Mackey, Jack Paul Roca, and at Dixon Bowley. Nice. So, Ashley, real quick recap of Hal Jordan Part One for the listeners. Um, Hal Jordan got Abinser's ring and became the Green Lantern after Abinser crashed into Earth. Sometimes he's a drunk. He's mostly an asshole. Sometimes he's a test pilot. He becomes the greatest Green Lantern ever because he knows no fear. Oh, and he uh, became Parallax and destroyed Coast City. He didn't destroy Coast City. Well, he killed a bunch of people. Not in Coast City. He destroyed us city. Did though, you listen right? to the last episode? <laughs> We recorded it very late at night. <laughs> did you? Did you? Were you asleep during most of the episode? Probably. Um, so, as you remember from our part one, <laughs> that clearly Ashley was not present for. Uh, 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 um, I called my clone in. Coast City was destroyed by the cyborg Superman. Oh, that's right. Not Hal Jordan at all. But Hal got mad about it and made a bunch of constructs, including his dad who hates him. Hal Jordan got mad about it and he killed every Green Lantern ever and he got possessed by Parallax. Mm. So... The next time that Hal Jordan appeared, because we're going to jump right in this lesson. There's no meat cute here. There's there's no we Tencent done origin. We did that. We did that last episode. Go back and listen to it. We'll wait. <laughs> okay, you're back? All right, good. You ready to start? What do you mean our audio quality was better in part one? We have the same setup. God, you're so hard to please. Yeah. Okay, so back to Zero Hour. The next time that Hal Jordan appeared as Parallax in a sweet Daryl Banks designed costume was in Zero Hour where he cold cocked Superman from behind. I am not joking. What a dick. (laughs) Superman just gets cold cocked and falls to the ground and that's a big event in Zero Hour. Ashley, do you know what Zero Hour is? Not really. I know it's the one where Hal Jordan is evil and that's usually how I describe it. When we do these questions. So Parallax, is how Jordan is Mm -hmm. now known, is responsible completely for the crisis and event known as Zero Hour. He started by defeating the Time Trapper, who is a Legion of Superheroes villain, at the end of time with the intention to recreate the universe and rewrite history the way that he thought it should be. Mm. So Parallax, during this event, kills various time travelers, basically only sparing the time travelers that he does not consider to be a threat. So when Parallax started to recreate the universe, he claimed how all he wanted to do was bring Coast City and all of his citizens back. And basically the only thing that he would change would be the death of Coast City. Mm. Um, He also tries to get the other heroes on his side because he claims that he can give all those heroes everything that they wanted. But Wave Rider, who is a cosmic-y, cosmic-y time traveler DC guy, teleports all of Earth's heroes to encounter Parallax, who faces all of his former allies, even Oliver Queen Green Arrow, who puts an arrow in the center bullseye mark of Hal Jordan's chest. I mean, he literally has... A target on his chest. Yep. Now, do you remember, of course, that another Green Lantern weakness is wood? wood. Yep. So that's reason Thanks, Alan Scott. Uh, and right after Parallax was stopped during the final events of Zero Hour, him and Kyle Rayner, the current Green Lantern, was teleported back to Oa and they started a fight. Now, with all of his power gone, Parallax wants to take his ring back from Kyle in order to use it to drain power from Oa and fix things again. Kyle refuses and Kyle overloads the main core of Oa and blows up the planet to stop 
how. Mm. Now, that event happened in the zero issue of Green Lantern that I talked about in my meet cute in part one hey, of we, uh, Green Lantern Hal Jordan. Origins. Yep. And if you don't remember that, just go ahead and look, listen to episode one. We'll wait. Okay, you're back. See? Pretty easy. What do you mean I talked about Kyle Moore in the first episode? Are you out of your mind? God, listen to this episode. Okay. So difficult here. I don't know what your problem. I'm giving you a part two of Hal Jordan. Be grateful for God's sakes. Then we come to the final night storyline where the sun goes out and the heroes struggle to bring it back. Now, Hal Parallax shows up again. And during this event, he's kind of a good guy. He heals the paralyzed Jon Stewart. He resurrects Oliver Queen back from the dead because this is when Oliver Queen is dead and Connor Hawk is Green Arrow. Yeah, what a good time that was. And he extinguishes his powers and sacrifices himself to destroy the Sun Eater, which is the cause of why the sun mm-hmm. is out, and he reignites Earth's sun. So now Hal Jordan Parallax officially dead. Okay, yep. good. Uh, and that's the end of the lesson. Sweet. Yep, uh, we can pack it in right so now. It's a very short part, too. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't balance it Well, I just felt this. like we didn't have enough time, to be honest with you. You just thought, hey, like, Parallax is a good out. Well, like, we know with all comic book history, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're done. What? So sometime later, the Spectre was without a host. Ashley, who, real quick, is the Spectre? Um, the Spectre is the sp- uh, Spirit of Vengeance? And he basically goes around... He's God's wrath. Yeah, doing stuff that God tells him to do. He goes for vengeance. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. He's... Yeah. Uh, So, after a while, the Spectre is usually bonded with a human host. Mm -hmm. Now, during this period of time, the Spectre had no human host. And demons sought to use it to their advantage. With the help of the Sentinels of Magic, Hal became the new host... For the Spectre. Mm. And how, when he joined with the Spectre, attempted to bend the Spectre's mission from vengeance to redemption, using his powers to remove the star sapphire persona from his longtime love, Carol Ferris. No, yep. Carol. But how Jordan could not control the Spectre for long, and that leads into our next storyline. Ashley, I want to ask your opinion. Okay. I don't know how much of the Hal Jordan as Spectre you've read or encountered. None of it. Okay, he shows up in JSA. He shows up in Green Lantern. He shows I've up read, a little bit I've in Starman. I've read Man. him showing up. I've read the JSA stuff and I read the Starman sure. stuff, but I've never read like his book. Do you think they should have ever made Hal Jordan the Spectre? No. Um, I don't really like the Spectre. I'm going to be honest. So I'd be cool if like nobody was ever the Spectre. Um, I think making heroes with pre-existing mantles the Spectre gets into some hinky territory. Now, I understand from a branding perspective why you would want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't love it. Do you? Are you, no. you pro Hal Spectre? Not at all. The only thing that I actually like about it is that during this time, uh, there is a storyline where Hal Jordan Spectre gives Wally West his secret identity back. That's cool, yeah. That's mm-hmm. also a Jeff Johns storyline. Um, but I like that move. Like, he puts Wally West's secret identity back in the bag. Mm-hmm. So nobody knows who the Flash is. And that's the only thing I like that the Green Lantern uh, or Green Lantern Spectre does, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, there's a reason it got undid and never was revisited. Yep. It gets undone by Green Lantern Rebirth by Jeff Johns. Hey, imagine that. That's a good book. Now, during this story, it is revealed that the name Parallax came from an ancient yellow symbiote, mm-hmm. the representation of fear. Because Parallax was a creature that instilled great fear in entire civilization and everybody's fear made him stronger. Now, because of the menace that Parallax represented eons ago, the Guardians imprisoned Parallax within the central power battery on, on Oa. Because, like, why not keep him as close as possible? <laughs> yeah. Now, the imprisonment of Parallax was the reason behind the so-called yellow impurity that made Green Lanterns vulnerable to the color Yellow. Mm-hmm. I actually think that's kind of a cool idea. I think this is one of the best retcons that has ever been done in comic book history. Hats off to Mr. Johns. Uh, yes, I think it was so smart because the weakness of yellow to Green Lanterns is kind of ridiculous. Also because green as a color on the color spectrum is made up of yellow and blue. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, you learned that when Sinestro was also imprisoned in the power battery, you remember, mm-hmm. uh, he woke Parallax up and they started an elaborate plan against the Guardians in the Green Lantern Corps. And Sinestro helped Parallax search for a proper host in the Green Lantern Corps to infect, and they chose Hal Jordan of Earth. After Imagine that. F- <laughs> yep, after finding his objective, Parallax entered Hal's 
ring. Yep. Because, you know, of course, he draws his power from the central power battery. Uh Uh-huh. And he stayed there without being noticed. And when Coast City was destroyed by Cyborg Superman and Mongol, the control of Parallax over Hal Jordan heavily increased, making him insane. This is also the retcon of why... Um, Hal Jordan gets gray hair early. It's the fear from Parallax. I like Hal with gray hair, not going to lie. Really? I hate it. I, I think do. it looks dumb. I do like it. Yeah. Uh, it was also learned that Sinestro never died, and it was an illusion created by Sinestro to finally break the will of Hal Jordan and drive him completely over the edge. So when Hal destroyed the central power battery and killed the Guardians, except for Ganthet, he accidentally let Parallax escape and join his body with full power. Hal. How? Yeah. Why do you keep doing this to us? Keep getting all the guardians what? killed except Gantha. What? Mm. <laughs> How? Huh? Put the PBR down. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna drink, mm. I'm a pilot. <laughs> if you say so, I'm a pilot. If you say so, sweetie. Oh, don't make me call hold, the star sapphires hold, on you. Hold, hold, hold on. I think mm. I'm getting motion sickness. I'm getting motion sickness. <laughs> I'm a pilot. Man, I miss Guy Gardner. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go away, Guy. There's a Wolverines game on. <laughs> I don't understand that reference. Because he's from, yeah, Wolverines is his team. What? Guy Gardner is from, uh, I believe, Michigan. I or, didn't know there was a, sp- I literally didn't know there was a sport Wolverines, called Wolverines. Is Wolverines. Yep, there you go. I thought that was a Red Dawn we went, reference. We went way off the rails for that uh, <laughs> uh, bit. Yep, you're uh, welcome. Um, yeah. So, Again, Parallax is now fully inhabiting the body of Hal Jordan. Mm-hmm. He's not in the central power battery. There is no central power battery. This is the explanation to why Kyle's Green Lantern ring is the first Green Lantern ring that has no weakness against yellow, which, again, a nice little clever retcon kind by of Jeff a cool Johns. Idea, yeah. Yeah, because Ron Mars has said in many interviews that the reason why he didn't make Kyle's ring vulnerable to yellow is because he thought it was stupid. Well, so. when you're the writer, you can do that. Yep. When the story concludes. Thanks to the Spectre, Ganthet, Kyle Rayner, Guy Gardner, John Stewart, and Kilowog, Hal returns from the death from death again as a Green Lantern without any influence of the Spectre or Parallax. Oh well, thank goodness for that. Yep. And after the events of Rebirth, Hal moves to Coast City, which is now being reconstructed, and he becomes a captain in the Air Force again, the United States Air Force. And he starts to rebuild his friendship with Batman, who finally gets around to accepting Hal as a hero again. <laughs> now, actually, how pivotal is Green Lantern Rebirth to Hal Jordan? And let me ask you this question do you think somebody who's never read green lantern ever before can they make that their first story um i think in the hal jordan canon i think rebirth is unmatched to this day i think it is i don't know if it's maybe the single best issue or thing that hal's ever done but it is the single best uh, storyline, story mm-hmm. arc for him. And I do think if you've never read Green Lantern, but you're basically familiar with the character. Because it's mired in continuity, that it story. It is mired in continuity. But it's pretty radio-friendly, I think. Um, but it was the first, outside of Kyle's series, it was the first Green Lantern that I had read. Um, so I think if you kind of know like Green Lantern's ring from a planet, weird blue overlords, I think you can get everything that you need to get out of it. I think... Um, I think it's a very clean intro to the character, and I do think that, even though, like you mentioned, there is a lot of continuity, I think it does a good job explaining it. It does a good job when you finally meet Sinestro when he's naked in prison, explaining why he got there and what's going on. I don't think it's impenetrable. Um, and if So yeah, if you like Hal Jordan, I'm going to skip to my recommended reading. This is a great place to start. Sure. And then we get to Infinite Crisis. Ashley, what's that? Uh, Infinite Crisis is the one where Superboy Prime punches the universe into rebooting. Yes, uh, except it doesn't reboot. Well, sort of, but well, soft, really. the soft rebooting. Yep. Uh, during that event, the Green Lanterns lost thirty-three Green Lanterns. Uh, that is the most Green Lanterns they've ever lost since Parallax. Mm-hmm. And of course, that happens during their fight with Superboy Prime. But they eventually lock Superboy Prime up on Oa. Uh, soon, Carol Ferris is flying her plane because you know she's a pilot too, and she gets possessed by the Star Sapphire once again, and she attacks Hal and his current girlfriend Cowgirl, another fair, uh, another fellow pilot. At a bar. 
Star. Hal powers up his ring and becomes the Green Lantern, and eventually Hal removes the Sapphire from Carol, but then the Sapphire possesses his new girlfriend, Cowgirl. And this reveal happens when we finally learn about the Zamorans, the people that control the Star Sapphires, Mm -hmm. and we learn that they are also giving out rings that represent the Violet the violet light of love leading to the start of the buildup to the war of light. Mm -hmm. Interesting that they're violet because the costumes usually look pink. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Now Jordan's greatest enemy, Sinestro, remember him, starts building an army with yellow power rings that choose their wielders based on people who can instill great fear. Uh, One of these rings almost chooses Batman. Uh, Sinestro then attacks Oa when Hal and the Green Lanterns of Earth were waiting to talk to the Guardians of the Universe. Sinestro releases both Cyborg Superman and Superboy Prime what? during this event, and he's also able to kidnap Kyle Rayner and take the symbiote out of him. Now, you may not know what I'm talking about there, but Kyle was in control for a long time of the Ion Entity, yeah, yeah. which is the green version of Parallax. So it mm-hmm. is, represents will, like Parallax represents fear, uh, Ion represents um, will and of course you are going to learn that there are later symbiotes or creatures that represent all of the emotions yeah um, after instilling great fear into the heart of Kyle Rayner Sinestro fuses him with Parallax mm-hmm. and he gets a sweet uh, mixed version of Hal Jordan's Parallax costume and his own 90s costume and basically we reveal that Sinestro killed Kyle's mom which is a very low blow and as the Sinestro Corps uses their attack plan the Guardians use their last resort and they authorize lethal force against the Sinestro Corps making it okay for Green Lanterns to kill so the Green Lanterns are now able to kill people which I think is a very interesting thing especially since they are sort of a space cop organization cops have the way to kill but this is a pretty big deal since most DC heroes don't have the ability to kill so soon Hal learns that the Sinestro Corps never wanted to take control of Oa their real objective was always Earth So Hal saves his family before Parallax, who is now Kyle Rayner, can kill them. And during the confrontation, Parallax also absorbs Hal and becomes even more powerful. Now, while Hal is inside Parallax, he helps Kyle to get rid of the influences of Parallax. And after being freed from that evil influence by Hal, Ganthet and Saeed, or Saeed, it's S-A-Y-D, it's the it's the other woman lantern who I've never heard her name said out loud, so I'm, I'm assuming it's Saeed. What do, you, what do you think, Ashley? S-A-Y-D. I've always said Saeed, yeah. I'm just going to say Saeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, they trap Parallax inside the batteries of the four Green Lanterns of Earth. So they are the ones that are going to be able to have the will to beat fear. And Hal and Kyle go back to Coast City and use Hal's ring to warn everybody there to evacuate the city. Hal's family refuses to leave, just like most everyone else in the city. And the people of Coast City start setting green lights in their houses to show their support for Green Lantern. And this is when Coast City becomes known as the city without fear. Now, Hal, during their final battle with Sinestro, realizes that Sinestro actually won Mm. because he wanted the guardians of the universe to sanction the use of lethal force. Sinestro wanted to make the Green Lantern Corps better. So Sinestro uses manhunters that are around to absorb the energy from both the rings of Hal and Kyle. And after they are being attacked by Sinestro, Hal then uses the head of a manhunter to absorb the energy of the ring from Sinestro. So they are in a hand-to-hand combat fight on top of a building in Coast City. And while the other Green Lanterns destroy the Sinestro Corps battery, they also uh, stop the Anti-Monitor, they stop the Cyborg Superman, and the entire army of Manhunters uh, as Hal and Kyle defeat Sinestro. Yeah, that's right. The Anti-Monitor, the guy from Christ on Infinite Earth, is in this issue. Um, also during the storyline, Jeff Johns was actually able to work in a joke made from the Simpsons movie. Because remember, there's a joke about what is EPA. Mm-hmm. And EPA is a sound effect shown on page in Green Lantern number 25 when Sinestro throws Hal Jordan. Um, well, excuse me. Uh, the joke of the Simpsons actually is that they say that Sinestro throws Hal Jordan into a vat of acid and he says EPA. And in issue 25, uh, there is actually an EPA. It's E E E dash P A during the final battle between Hal and Sinestro. In The Simpsons, it's the Environmental Protection Agency. That's right. 
Uh, now, after the events of the Sinestro Corps War, Hal is one of the Green Lanterns chosen to escort Sinestro to Korrigar, where his home planet, where he will be executed. And upon arrival, the escort team is ambushed by the Red Lanterns. And this is their introduction. Now, Ashley, this is the start of the building to the War of Light. Can you name all the different colored lanterns and what they stand for? If I'm going to give you a color. Please give me what you think they stand for. Okay. Black. Death. Red. Anger. Yeah. Orange. Greed. Yellow. Fear. Green. Will. Blue. Uh, with, uh, hope. Hope. Yep. Indigo. I don't know what the indigo Compassion. do. Star Sapphire. Love. White. Life? Yeah, because it's the opposite of black. <laughs> yeah, we went through the whole color spectrum. Um, it's it's also, like the rainbow, guys. It's Roy G. Yeah, Biff with black and white on the end. It's yeah. also crazy, too, to think about, and we talked about this a couple of times before, how in at this time, 50 to 60 years of Green Lantern lore, nobody came up with this idea. Jason, diverging wildly and completely, favorite Lantern Corps. I really like the Blue Lantern core. Yeah. I really do. Because I, I think it's because I like the design of Sate Walker, and I think they have the coolest symbol. Yeah. Um, and I just like the Blue Lanterns a lot. What about you? Not my favorite, but the one I'm most interested in is... Uh, and what is your favorite? Then? Well, because it's the one... <laughs> I feel like saying this is my favorite is like dangerous ground, but it's like the one I'm most intrigued by, and the one I would most like to write is the Red Lanterns. Oh, okay. So but if you're like, so they're not your favorite. If you're like, well, my favorites, the Red Lanterns, you seem like a freaking psycho. So who are your favorites then? Are they I the Red don't Lanterns? Know. Um, if you're most interested in them, I'm going to say it's probably the Red Lanterns. Yeah, but like, I, you who know, cares what people think? I, uh, we do. We're p- pundits on the internet. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what you think. They just told me that they. I thought they didn't think I talked about Kyle enough in the last episode. Oh, so. they're they're wrong. Yeah, there you go. Um, so the Red Lanterns capture Sinestro, leaving both Green Lantern and Sinestro Corps members behind to die. And Hal and the rest of the Green Lanterns are then rescued by a Blue Lantern named Saint Walker. He accompanies Walker to Odom, which is the home of the Blue Lantern Corps. And the coolest, they have elephants. Yep, uh, we're, we're going to learn about the elephant. Um, now, the coolest thing about this is that the Blue Lantern rings make the Green Lantern rings. They repower them and mm-hmm. they make them so much stronger. And actually, a blue lantern ring is powerless without a green lantern nearby. Interesting. Which is interesting. I, I think it's interesting that you need hope with Will or something mm-hmm. like that, you know? Uh, Hal then reluctantly teams up with the only two blue lanterns, Walker and Worth, who is the elephant, to rescue Sinestro from Atrocitus. Remember him I from part do. one? He's now the leader of the Red Lantern Corps. He has a weird face. Yep. In a conversation with St. Walker, Hal then discovers that Gantha is expecting Hal to join the Blue Lantern Corps as its leader. And on Ysmalt, remember that planet, the home mm-hmm. of Atrocitus, Hal is then captured by the Red Lanterns and hung up to a cross right next to Sinestro, very similar to the way that Atrocitus was hung up on a cross. Hey, you imagine that. Now, the Blue Lanterns and the Sinestro Corps arrive moments later. They free Hal Jordan of Sinestro, but soon, losing all his self-control, Hal's dormant anger unleashes as he attacks Attempts to murder Sinestro, which attracts a red power ring and inducts him into the Red Lantern Corps. Unlike the other Red Lanterns at the time, Hal has so much will and rage that he is able to create constructs with the red ring. He's a Christmas lantern. He is He's a Christmas red lantern. and green. Yep. Now, when Hal attempts to murder Sinestro, St. Walker forces his blue ring onto Hal in a desperate attempt to free the Green Lantern from the Red Ring's influence, and it successfully breaks the Red Ring's hold uh, and returns Hal to normal. Atrocitus is left wounded. Hal remains mostly unharmed, although he's wearing a green and blue lantern hybrid, which makes the other green lanterns wary of him because they've never seen this before. Now, eventually, Hal meets an emissary from basically every every color core, including Larfleeze, uh, the ugly and only orange lantern, and the mine, 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 mine. Yep, and the Indigo tribe. Uh, But then we emerge into Blackest Night. Ashley, I want to ask your question. Mm -hmm. Uh, What are your impressions of Blackest Night? Do you remember any of the build-up to it? Have you ever read any of the build-up to it? And do you know basically what it is about? Uh, Blackest Night is like these Black Lantern rings come to Earth and they start raising dead DC characters. Yes. Um, I've read none of it. 
Mm-hmm. I've read none of the lead up to Fallout from spinoffs of because I hate zombies. And uh, that's what this is. Were you working in a comic shop at the time that Blackest Night was being released? Yes, right toward the end. Do of you it. remember any customers like talk? Because from my perspective, it was, it was huge. It was a huge deal. Uh, it was huge. And then uh, Brightest Day, less huge. Yeah. But I'm um, talking about Blackest Night. Yeah. I also feel like Marvel Zombies was really big around this time. I think that was a couple years before that. But yeah, um, you're right. But it feels like it all came out of the same sort of zeitgeist. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was not having it. But it was huge. And yeah. it remained. Regardless of my feelings about it, um, it remains one of the most well-loved and most important uh, DC events. It's probably the best Lantern event. I don't think there are many other Lantern events. Well, but yes. but you know what I mean. Um, um, the interesting thing about Blackest Night is that it started with a zero issue on free comic book day. The only free comic book day comic that has ever mattered in yes. larger content. Uh, I still call that the best free comic book day issue ever. It is the only free comic book day issue that I still own. Imagine that. Uh, both Jeff Johns and Ethan Van Scriver have said that Blackest Night is the third part of their Green Lantern event trilogy that begins with Rebirth, continues with Sinestro Core War, and ends with Blackest Night. Mm, makes sense. Uh, in the event, how along with John, Guy, and Kyle, uh, who are all Green Lanterns, by the way, I kind of glossed over that. John and Guy are now Green Lanterns. They're just um, all there yep. all the time. And they attend a parade in Coast City on the anniversary of Superman's death, which has become a national holiday to remember fallen superheroes, which I think is a, such a neat that's bit. That's nice. Yeah, I like that. Um, it also shows that people still remember Superman's death, and that's still a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hal meets up with Barry Allen, who's now back from the dead, at the Hall of Justice, where the two look over the JLA morgue, which contains mostly supervillain remains. And Hal explains that Supervillain remains are being put into a vault since Dick Grayson has just uncovered a corpse harvesting ring. The pair are then contacted by Alfred, who tells them that Bruce Wayne's grave was dug up and his skull is missing. Now, if you're a little bit confused, this is because this is post final crisis and Batman was thought dead at the time. But where was he actually? He was falling through Grant Morrison's timey wimey stuff and fighting his way back through yep. his lineage. Yep, dressing up like a pilgrim with bad ears. Uh, I think you're forgetting Cave Bat. Yeah. Yes, and uh, Dick Grayson at this time was Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, has a really great tie into Blackest Night. There's a Batman Final Crisis, uh, and it's really cool where, uh, where Dick and Damien team up and they sort of fight other, I think, uh, resurrected Batman villains. It's kind of cool. Cool. Uh, Hal and Barry go to Gotham to investigate where they previously deceased John Joes, who died in Final Crisis, appears before them as a Black Lantern, telling them that they both should be dead. After finding John, uh, John Jones retreats, and John, Jordan and Barry continue investigating. Now, Hal finds out himself teaming up not only with Barry, who was also resurrected from the dead, but also he must team up with Sinestro, Atrocitus, Lar Fleas, his former love Carol Ferris, who is now a star of Sapphire again, Saint Walker, and Indigo One, plus Ganthet and Sade, in order to save the universe. These people sort of become nicknamed the New Guardians. Yes. Now, eventually, all of Blackest Night is revealed to be a plan by Necron, the embodiment of death. Hey, Rem- remember him? Remember him from episode one? Or, I mean, episode one, part one, excuse me. Episode one. Yep. <laughs> uh, and basically, he wants to purge all emotion from the universe. That's why the Black Lanterns seek out emotion to destroy. And that's why Necron is going after the heroes that have been resurrected. Um We also get a small reveal that heroes and people that are at peace cannot be resurrected by Black Lantern rings. Uh, Necron has Batman's corpse. It's later revealed to be a clone briefly reanimated to gain a necessary connection. Um, It has nothing to do with it. But Necron then sends rings to Superman, Wonder Woman, Connor Kent, Superboy, Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, Kid Flash, Donna Troy, Ice, and Animal Man because they've all been previously killed and he revives them as Black Lantern members. He also sends two Black Rings uh, after Hal and Barry. Now, Barry Allen time travels himself and Hal Jordan two seconds into the future, which disables the Black Rings. Um, And soon... John Stewart warns Hal that every Black Lantern in the universe is heading for Earth. Now, Jordan figures out that they need the entire seven cores of light 
to unite and produce white light, which is the only thing that can stop the Black Lanterns. Now, while they summon the seven cores to Earth, Ganthet duplicates the seven colored rings present because you find out that every different colored ring is essentially based on a Green Lantern ring, and Ganthet has revealed that there is secret code inside the Green Lantern rings that any guardian of the universe can duplicate them. So by process, he can duplicate any colored ring. I think it's interesting, and it teaches me that uh, Mr. Johns and Mr. Van Scriver don't know color theory because they think that combining all colors will make white and not black. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it, and I understand the metaphor that they're going for, but mm-hmm. that part of my brain that took mm-hmm. the, that first art class in third grade is like... Mm. It's actually, a, the, in the story, it's a thing where like only a couple of lanterns have to combine to get the, the, the white mm-hmm. color. It's not all of them. Uh, but it's better um, but, but, I, all of but them. I understand your thing. It's more, it's stronger. Mm-hmm. So Gantha duplicates all these rings. Gantha gets a new Green Lantern. Barry Allen becomes the Blue Lantern. Mara of Aquaman becomes a red. Lex Luthor becomes another Orange Lantern. Scarecrow joins as a Yellow Lantern, and the Atom Ray Palmer joins as an Indigo. And Scarecrow Yellow Lantern is scary. Yep. I've seen that art. And Wonder Woman. Uh, becomes a star sapphire violet because it separates her from her black ring. Mm-hmm. Which I I, lo- I love that Wonder Woman is the love duplicate, which is cool. I they think make, all uh, these choices are smart. They, I think they made an action figure. They of made Wonder action Lord. figures of all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Uh, so Necron kills another guardian and uses his blood to cause a cocoon to emerge. And Ganthet reveals that this is the white light entity, this or the symbiote, as I was saying, that triggered existence of all life, and that life actually began on Earth in the universe and not on Oa. And the Guardians upheld the lie to protect the entity so that no one would know where the entity was hidden. Mm. Necron stabs the white entity causing all living beings in the universe across the universe to feel pain. And Sinestro surrenders to his anger at Abensur's death and stabs Ganthet. Now, Hal realizes that the entity is... Exactly like Parallax and Ion and needs a guide. And Hal tries to merge with it, but he's blocked by Sinestro. Now, Sinestro demands the entity's power and merges with it and is told that Thal Sinestro of Korrigar, because Thal is his first name, destiny awaits. He becomes a White Lantern, but he is promptly killed by Necron, but the White Ring revives him. Um, soon, we find that Necron, even though he's killed by a white lantern he comes right back to death he comes right back to death he comes right back to living again (laughs) just in any human body Mm. Uh, Necron says that death cannot be stopped and Necron then separates Sinestro in the entity Hal Jordan merges with the white entity and transforms himself and the other black lantern heroes including Superman into the white lantern cores and using this power they resurrect the anti-monitor the big bad of right. Crisis on Infinite Earths, because of course he's back again. Because why not? You know, we could resurrect literally anyone. Why not a bad guy? Yep. So the Anti Monitor begins to fight Necron, um, and we learn that, we, that he fights Necron because his soul was trapped in the Black Lantern battery. Necron briefly fights the Anti Monitor, but then banishes the Anti Monitor back to his homeworld on Quard in the Anti Monitor universe. But then the Twelve Right Rings resurrect a bunch of Black Lanterns. They resurrect Maxwell Lord, Professor Zoom, Jade, who is Kyle's old girlfriend, Hawk from Hawk and Dove, Captain Boomerang, Firestorm, the Ronnie Raymond version, Martian Manhunter. Aquaman, Hawkman, Hawk Girl, Dead Man, and Osiris, who is like sort of this stepson of um, Teth Adam, Black uh, Black Adam, um, and they're all back from the life. And Necron is then destroyed by all of these white rings. Uh, Hal and Barry then realize that because Black Lantern Batman was a fake, that Bruce Wayne must be alive out there somewhere, and a White Lantern is discovered in a crater. Mm. Now, I talked about Blackest Night a lot. Because I think that Blackest Night is one of the strongest events ever done by DC Comics. Uh, But I think because the reason why it's so strong is because we have been building towards Blackest Night for about five years. Mm -hmm. For almost the entirety since Green Lantern Rebirth. There are teases to it in Green Lantern Rebirth. I also think the event, I think it's like eight issues long. No issue of that event feels like a waste. Mm. There's a lot of great character development. There's 
amazing turns like when you know Wonder Woman becomes a, a Star Sapphire the Atom becomes a Indigo and there's an amazing action figure line as well yeah yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> I do think I don't know if I were to name like some of the best events that DC Comics has ever done like it would be hard for me not to put Blackest Night in my top three yeah I feel like Blackest Night is usually on those lists yeah it's really really but like, because of the build up mm-hmm. is why I think it's so strong then Brightest Day happens as a weekly comic book event and it's basically forgettable uh, but all what happens in it is how in the new Guardians, uh, all the main people from the different Lantern Corps basically team up and fight their respective entities. Yay. That's it. Great. It's kind of boring. Great. Uh, we then come to the event War of the Green Lanterns. I bet they fight. Yeah, it's kind of in the title. So when Sinestro and the other New Guardians are trapped in the Book of the Black Lanterns mm-hmm. uh, while trying to recover the entities, when they find that Krona... Remember him, the guardian who tried to pierce the veil and look at the creation of the universe? Yeah, with the feminine Latin name instead of the masculine. Mm -hmm. Well, he is trying to capture all the entities. So he traps all... Why? Why? Because he's evil. Why, why, why? Because he's evil. (laughs) Um, So the only new guardian that escapes is Hal Jordan. And Hal Jordan escapes with all their rings because only their bodies are pulled through in this book of the black, not their rings. Mm -hmm. Conveniently. Also, uh, because they like drawing art of him with all kinds of rings on his fingers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, soon, Parallax is returned by Krona to the central power battery. Oh, good. This not only returns the yellow impurity, but allows Krona to use Parallax to control all Green Lanterns in the universe. If you use sure. a Green Lantern ring, this Guardian of the Universe can now control you. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so... Thanks to their Hal and Kyle's previous experiment experiences, excuse me, with Parallax, they are the only Green Lanterns that are able to withstand this mind control. Mm. Uh, so eventually, Hal and Kyle gather John and Guy Gardner and convince them to take off their green rings, and they give them the other rings of the new Guardians so that they can fight back against Krona. Mm-hmm. Hal wields a Sinestro Core ring. Kyle wears blue. Guy wears red, and John takes the star sapphire ring. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Now, with their new rings, Hal and the others try to help Ganthet, who, of course, is also immune, Mm -hmm. in fighting off the brainwashed lanterns, uh, but they are unable to properly control their powers because they've never been these lanterns before. Suddenly, they are attacked by Mogo. Ashley, who is Mogo? Mogo is a green lantern who's a planet. Yes. Correct? Yes. yes. He, he is a, a, an entire planet. But of course, he is controlled by Krona now. Right, because of the yellow yep. impurity. So to escape, the Earthmen enter an underground tunnel that leads them to the Foundry, a secret chamber that's never been revealed before. Where, of course not. Where all Green Lantern rings and batteries are forged. There they meet a mysterious creature named Shed. That's Shed with two Ds. He attacks them until eventually he learns that they're not crazy like the other Green Lanterns. Shed gives Guy Gardner the original power gauntlet. Now, this power gauntlet was built by Krona and is basically the prototype Green Lantern. It is the thing that the Guardians built before they built Green Lantern rings. So it has the same abilities of a Green Lantern ring. It's just not as powerful. And it's so sort they were of almost the green gauntlets. They're almost the green gauntlets. Yes, hmm. because the Guardians didn't know how to. Um, wield the energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They just knew that they could wield the power of will. And it hooks up to a... I love the design of this gauntlet, actually. I think Doug Monkey is the one who did the original design on it. Mm-hmm. But it sort of has a... It's a big gauntlet. It's metallic. It has all this green thing on it. And then it sort of connects with the tube to your back because it's not connected to the central power battery. It has... Your, you carry your battery on your back. Okay. It's old school. I, I don't know how I feel about it's that. It's old school. Uh, eventually, though, John Stewart is forced to kill Mogo. Oh, Johnny. Yeah, to, to win. Uh, Guy successfully removes Parallax from the battery with the gauntlet, and when Parallax is removed, the impurity disappears, and all the Green Lanterns are freed from Krona's control. The Earthmen regain their Green Lantern rings, and they prepare to fight Krona and the possessed Guardians, because uh, all the entities now, we find out, are in all of the Guardians of the Universe. Krona attacks Hal, uh, but... 
inspired by how speech about how he fights for the potential of the cores despite the imperfections of the Guardians, Sinestro joins House's fight against Krona. But before Krona can attack, attack Sinestro back, because all the, gar- the new Guardians are free from the book, of course, mm-hmm. a spare Green Lantern ring chooses Sinestro and finds him worthy. I love Green Lantern and Sinestro. Yep. So, I love it. Me too. And there's a great action figure of Sinestro as a Green Lantern yes. as well. Don't you have it? I do. I do. As, I do. <laughs> uh, Hal and Sinestro as Green Lanterns team up to attack Krona. Sinestro overpowers Krona and it leads to Hal killing Krona. Finally. Yes. So it's Cro- only taken 50 years. Yep. So Krona is now finally dead, 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 dead. This releases all the entities from the Guardians. However, and all the rings return to their former wielders, of course. Mm-hmm. However, um, the Guardians expel Hal from Oa. What? And due to his recent rebellion by working with other ring bearers, coupled with his now murder of a guardian, something that should not be possible due to the security measures that the guardians have implanted in the rings several millennia ago, they now believe that Howell's the most dangerous Green Lantern, that his willpower is able to override their safeguards. You have too much will yep. in the will core. Yep. Get out. Despite Gambit's attempt to defend him, they discharge Hal Jordan from the court, taking to the core, excuse me, taking his ring and sending him back to Earth. And Hal appears on a desert highway saying it should not end like this. This is also when the Guardians become super evil. They also brainwash Gambit. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the new 52 happens. Mm-hmm. Ashley, what's that? There were so many continuities, and DC said this is too many continuities. Barry Allen missed his mom. He selfishly ran back in time, didn't care what happened, ruined the timeline, and everyone got more lines in their costumes. Yep. So, and everyone's only been a superhero for five years, except Green Lantern, because Jeff Johns was like, I'm not undoing all of the work I just did. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> so, yes, the DC rebirth, re, excuse me, the DC universe is completely rebooted. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a complete reboot right Superman wears jeans now uh, Animal Man's around for some reason Tim um, was never Tim Robin. Drake was never Robin but nothing changes for two characters Hal Jordan mm-hmm. and Batman mm-hmm. there's no reboot for either of them now some stuff got pushed under the rug like sure during the new 52 it's never quite certain if Hal Jordan ever died yeah and yeah, there's never yeah. quite certain if Hal Jordan became parallax and went crazy leading to Kyle Rayner there are storylines in the new 52 that basically contradict that mm-hmm. but for me it's still in continuity and it kind of seems by the time we get to DC Rebirth about five years later that that stuff is brought back and it's kind of like no everything that happened for Green Lantern happened yeah and we decided that we liked that thing that Grant Morrison said once and yes. we're doing this yes uh, so basically during the new 52 Sinestro is now a Green Lantern and Hal is not Hal as a human Human, tries to pick up his relationship with Carol again, but he's actually barely a functioning human being. Remember, he's not a lantern and he can barely pay rent and barely hold the job. Yeah. R- really? Yep. I'm a pilot. God. <laughs> Hal, I hate to break it to you. Hi, uh, Carol. But you're basically insufferable. What? Yeah, hey, you want to go out and date, Carol? No. I put on pants today, Carol. Yeah, but they're sweatpants. Yeah, I better show pants, Carol. They're sticky. I'm a pilot. No, you're not. I'm a pilot. Well, how about this, sweetie? If you could drive yourself to the dad, airfield. Dad, <laughs> dad's dead. No, no. Carol, my dad's dead. Mm, I heard that. He was a pilot. Mm. Did I mention I put on pants today, Carol? Yeah. Mm. I think that's a lie. I think I have a pizza somewhere around here somewhere. I'm pretty certain I have a pizza. I think you're wearing it. No, I'm sitting on it. Oh. Still good? (laughs) There was another episode into Hal Jordan Theater. Thank you, everyone. Jason was also doing space work for nobody but me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So Sinestro basically shows up to this mook of a Hal Jordan. and Hal just can't get his life together if he's not a Green Lantern. It's not. He's the greatest Green Lantern. He just doesn't have will to live outside of <laughs> Oa. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Sinestro offers a copy of his ring. I literally thought you were going to save his autobiography. <laughs> and I have no idea. If you, Hal Jordan, it's, I love the color yellow. <laughs> it's Thal Sinestro. I'm the best lantern. No, seriously, I am. 
really? No, I'm going to kill you. I'm the best Green Lantern <laughs> by a thousand Astro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's what I thought, but I like earnestly thought you were going to be like, Sinestro shows up with a copy of his autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Sinestro offers a copy of his ring uh, to Hal for his help for freeing Korrigar. Um uh, Basically, we're not going to talk about that event because they do it. Okay. Uh, then they learn the secret of the Indigo tribe, uh, which we'll all tell you in just a second. Uh, and this is a start of the end of Jeff John's Green Lantern run. And it really builds up the relationship between Sinestro and Hal, which is something that is forgotten that Hal and Sinestro were best friends. Mm-hmm. Hal it was taught by Sinestro mm-hmm. and they sort of became very similar. And the reason why Sinestro has always been a villain for these many years, especially when you look at this uh, as told through the lens of Jeff Johns, which is the relationship with Sinestro that I subscribe to, that the reason why Sinestro hates Hal so much is because he saw Hal turning him in as a betrayal of their friendship. Mm-hmm. And so he doesn't view it as like, I'm the villain. He views it as like, dude, yeah. You stabbed me in the back. Yeah. You're my BFF. Why? Even though Sinestro was committing crimes. But Sinestro still sees it as a, you know, a betrayal. Yeah. But, you know, Sinestro is nope. like cooler than hell. So yeah. I, I get it. We then get to the storyline called the Rise of the Third Army. Now, let me explain to you who the Third Army is. Okay. The Third Army was a long prophesized group of soldiers that were stated in a prophecy to replace the Green Lantern Corps. Its existence was mentioned within the Book of the Black Lanterns and was stated then that they were the greatest threat to the Green Lanterns because the greatest threat for the Green Lanterns would come from the Guardians of the Universe themselves. Gee, imagine that. Now, let me give you a brief history of the Guardians. Because okay. they're not perfect. So the Guardians decided to bring order into the cosmos. They created the mechanical Manhunters as their agents until the machines were sabotaged by Krona and they destroyed a lot of planets. Following that, they decided that organic organic, excuse me, sentients would serve them in the form of the Green Lantern Corps. Now, unknown to the Owens, the existence of this prophecy that the greatest threat against the Guardians, or the, excuse me, the Green Lantern Corps would come from the Guardians... Abin Sur decided to stop the threat posed by the Masters. And Abin Sur gets a little bit cooler in my book and makes me like him even more. Mm. He helped form the Indigo tribe made up of former convicts, murderers, and criminals with the intention of using the light of compassion to stop the guardians of the universe. They were his fail-safe tribe. Interesting. So though, even though Abinser died, the tribe he founded would continue to live on with the goal of fulfilling their founder's purpose by bringing compassion to the universe and to the guardians of the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, all the conflicts I've told you about, the Sinestro Corps War, the War of Light, the Blackest Night, the War of the Green Lanterns, led the guardians to believe that the Green Lanterns were flawed and they needed to create their third army. To accomplish this goal... They, we find out that they are still holding the first lantern hostage. That he is an energy being that can possess basically all the emotional spectrums. His name is Volthoom. Mm. And they use some of his energy to bring about the rise of the third army, who are basically mindless sort of organic people that just attack people. Okay. Uh, it's during the story arc that Simon Baz is introduced, mm-hmm. uh, um, the Muslim-American uh, Green Lantern, who I really like. He's a cool costume. Uh, eventually, the he does have a great costume. Eventually, the Green Lanterns stop the Thurn army, uh, and that is because the true threat of this arc is Volthoom, the first lantern who escapes during the storyline. Now, let me tell you who Volthoom is. Okay. Eons ago, he was the very first Lantern created and empowered by the Guardians of the Universe in order to protect life. And rather than just wielding the green light of willpower, Volthoom wielded all seven parts of the emotional spectrum. However, this appeared to backfire as Volthoom revealed himself to not be able to handle all the power. And in the Guardian's own words, he became an emotional sadist who enjoyed playing with the souls of living things for his own amusement, seeing them light up with the different emotions. Mm. So that's what made the Guardians lock him up. Uh, Volthoom escapes into the universe. He screws with all the different lanterns. He eventually destroys Korrigar, Sinestra's home mm-hmm. planet. Um, and eventually Hal realizes that they are going to need a big gambit to beat him. So Hal jumps off a cliff, killing himself. What? And that's the end of the lesson. So uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, Hal <laughs> Jordan is now dead again. Um, Hal dies enters the realm of the dead 
and gets a black ring, becoming a black Ooh, lantern. I hate this. As a black lantern, Hal Jordan contacts the Indigo tribe, who open a portal between the realm of the living and the dead zone. And Hal escapes from the dead zone, unleashing a horde of undead black lanterns against Volthoom. Mm. But Volthoom is able to destroy the army easily because, guess what? Volthoom can access all the different uh-huh. colors. What's a weakness of a black lantern, as we've learned? White. All White, the colors. Which Volthoom can just spit out like nothing like mm-hmm. it's going out of style right um so volthoom almost takes out Hal as a black lantern as well almost killing him for good uh sinestro's plan now this goes again to show you why these two men are very similar sinestro's plan to beat volthoom is to become the newest host of parallax okay so look at these so Hal's like i'm gonna kill myself and i'm gonna become a black lantern sinestro's like you know what i'm gonna be possessed by a creature of fear that we can't control that's worked out so well for the people who've done it in the past do you understand why these two men are friends they're both idiots yeah <laughs> they're both insane weirdos um so how with using his black ring goes into the dead zone and unleashes necron as a failsafe sure, last gambit why plan not? to Great. stop volthoom yeah necron kills Volthoom. Good. Uh, when the battle ends, Hal lets go of the Black Ring and finally is rewarded with a Green Lantern once again and seals Necron with the other Green Lanterns back into the dead zone. Hal just keeps failing his way up to being a Green Lantern mm-hmm. again. Uh, as Hal reunites with Carol, we find out that the Parallax enthused uh, excuse me, uh, full of Parallax uh, Sinestro reactivates a Sinestro core and goes to kill all of the Guardians of the Universe for everything that they've done. Because they cause Volthoom, they cause the Third mm-hmm. Army, everything like that. Hal attempts to stop him. But when he finally arrives there, he finds out he's too late. And Sinestro has killed all of the Guardians of the Universe. With the exception of Ganthet and of Sade. Course. Who you find out he secretly keeps alive. Mm. Uh, they go to be exiled from Oa together. Um and uh, um, they eventually, you know, um, you know, wander about the universe as lovers, which is something that the Guardians are not supposed to do. Oh, yeah. And that's a through line for them for a while. Yes. For a while. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Hal then asked Sinestro if they were ever f- truly friends. And Sinestro departs from Oa, saying that the greatest tragedy between them is that no matter how much they hate each other and no matter how much they want to kill each other, they will always be friends. Now, for me... That's the last issue of Jeff Johns' Green Lantern run. Mm-hmm. For me, this is also the end of Green Lantern Hal Jordan's story. Mm-hmm. It is I, what I think a perfect ending for Hal Jordan because it's a great coda Jeff Johns' run. And this whole issue, you find out at the very end that spoilers, it's being told by Sinestro's perspective and that in the far, far, far future, Sinestro is the new keeper of the book of the Green Lanterns. Oh, that's cool. I never knew that. And this issue is him telling the story of him and Hal and, and you know, whatever. And it's it's great. Um, it has that, it completes that arc between Sinestro and Hal Jordan. And it's just really, really solid. And I think it does put to bed the story of the Green Lanterns because you're you're left to believe that Hal Jordan, like, leads the Green Lantern Corps into this new golden age because there is no Guardians of the uh, Universe around. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is comic books. Um, and I'm going to very briefly touch on what happens on, uh, of course, um, the Green Lantern Corps continues. Hal becomes the uh, leader of the Green Lantern Corps. Mm-hmm. He's really bad at it. Surprise! Um, he fights this villain called Relic, who is from the universe before our universe. Think uh, DC Galactus. Sure. Oh. Um, he fights the new gods who don't like that there are emotional wielders around uh, You know the universe. That storyline's not bad. But to me, none of these stories, he even makes Jessica uh, Cruz and Simon Baz new Green Lanterns, mm-hmm. none of these storylines have the awe... Uh, yeah, ending that that Jeff Johns issue does. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm going to end our lesson on Hal Jordan because Ooh. that to me is the perfect ending of Hal Jordan. Cool. So there you go. Uh, and also something that is not a perfect ding- ending is every time you lay your head down to sleep. And that leads us into today's sponsor of this episode, Lisa. Hey. We talk about Lisa a lot. We like Lisa a lot. Lisa is an innovative direct-to-consumer online mattress brand, and that means that they ship mattresses straight to your house or your you know, locker on OA in a super cool compressed box that can travel through subspace. 
They cannot guarantee that space will happen when you send your super cool compressed box. Uh, but they want to send a mattress to you. Their patented universal adaptive feel leads to a comfortable cool feel for all kinds of sleepers and their mattresses are made with three premium foam layers they have a two inch avena foam top layer for cooling they have a two inch memory foam middle layer for body contouring and they have a six inch dense core support foam for durability these mattresses are available in the united states the united kingdom canada and germany and uh, we have been told that future sites will also include Yismalt, the home of the Red Lanterns. Uh, that is not guaranteed by Lisa. But you can get $100 off the mattress, la- the, excuse me, the Lisa mattress by using the below uh, URL, lisa.com slash geekhistory. And when you're ordering your mattress, your promo code is geekhistory. Get $100 off. It's an awesome mattress. I've slept on them uh, for several months now, and they are awesome. Thank you so much to Lisa, for sponsoring this episode. Yes. All right, let's go into our recommended reading. Where, if you are interested in reading more about Green Lantern, Professor Jason is going to give you three recommendations. You can find this and all of our recommended reading at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. There's these cool Amazon widgets. You click them, you get yourself something to read, and you help support the Mind University while you're at it. All right, now, what my number one volume for reading Green Lantern is Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, Volume 1. It's a stray that was released last year. It it collects the first couple issues of Hal's solo series in the 80s, mm-hmm. but it also has Emerald Dawn and Emerald 1 nice. and Emerald Dawn 2. Uh, my preferred origins uh, to... I didn't talk about Emerald Dawn 2 that much is because Emerald Dawn 2 is all about Sinestro training Hal. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, if you like that Sinestro Hal bro love, that's where you want to go. The second one is Green Lantern Rebirth. Uh, as I talked about, it is. I agree with Ashley. It is one of the best Green Lantern storylines of all time. It is one of the best Hal Jordan storylines of all time. And I don't think you need... I think it is a pretty good fresh start. It is very minor in continuity, but I think if you've never read a Green Lantern story, I think you can read it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to mention, of course, what I think is the best storyline in Jeff John's Green Lantern run, Blackest Night. It is a solid event in DC Comics history, and it's really cool. And when you see that moment where all the Green Lanterns, uh, the Green Lantern and the Color Cores team up, it's amazing. All right, let's go into the teaching tweet. Where in 140 characters or less, because we're old school, Professor J. Jason is going to sum up everything he just taught us over two episodes about Hal Jordan. And also, don't forget to tell us whether you, um, you know, like or dislike the teaching tweet. Because, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're curious. Yeah, and find it at GHL Podcast. Hal Jordan. He's brash and cocky and kind of a screw up. But the Guardians are going to keep telling us he's the best Green Lantern of all time. Best at picking up alien babes. Maybe. Hashtag Manbo. <laughs> don't slut shame him. Yeah, I kind of did. I'm a pilot. If you just, you know, just because you keep saying that doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, I'm a bitch. Yeah, you sound a lot like this guy named Barry who was recently yelling, I'm the Flash. (laughs) (laughs) If I had, if I could afford a TV, I'd know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's true. Too much PBR for you. I met an alien once, baby. I believe you. He was pink. Pink. He was a pink pilot. I'm a pilot. Are you a good pilot? They say that every landing you walk away from is a good landing. Unfortunately, I've never landed a plane. So that means I'm a good pilot. I guess. Highball. I I just like to imagine that he says highball a lot. (laughs) Uh, there you go. Another episode of uh, Hal Jordan Theater that probably annoyed everybody. Uh, Ashley, what is the Geek Hitch Lesson honor roll? The honor roll is where if you head on over to iTunes and you leave us a five-star review, uh, we'll put you on the honor roll and read whatever it is that you write. That's right. Because <laughs> you help us uh, be cool on iTunes. Yeah. Uh, we have two students that we're going to give the key to the um, teacher's lounge the mine university teacher's lounge you can go in there and steal our bagels don't take the onion ones they're my favorites uh the first one is ta williams 01 who says geek history lesson has everything i value in a podcast it has a perfect balance of banter discussion and educational content to keep me both informed and entertained jason and ashley have hit on a great formula that makes a super podcast i follow a lot of comedy and educational podcasts but was missing content to appeal to my love of superheroes after finding this i not only have gone back to listen to the old episodes but recommend it to nerd and non-nerd friends oh, alike thank you thank you so much todd williams uh the second student that's going to join uh the honor roll is meadow the mango 
and they say, love, love, love geek history lesson. I have been following them on Spotify, and I have listened to virtually all of the episodes. Everything is extremely engaging, interesting, and perfect for the casual comic book lover who will inevitably become a diehard geek, in all caps. So, Todd Williams 01 and Meadow the Mango, thank you so much for uh, those reviews. Um, you know, please don't sit on the couches. They're for teachers only. Also, they might be sticky. They might be sticky with bagel juice, so don't do that. But if you want to be like them, head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review uh, because it helps us in our search algorithms on iTunes. And guys, if you like everything we do here and you want a little bit more and maybe a peek behind the curtains, then come join our Howl of Justice over at patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Over there, we do a whole whole extra geek history lesson podcast called you guessed it geek history lesson extra and this week's episode will be about our green lantern movie ideas so go over there check that out and if you enjoy anything we've ever done on this podcast then please consider supporting the value that we've given you every week at patreon.com slash jawin uh you can find us on twitter at jawin for me j-a-w-i-i-n ashley where can they find you on twitter at ashley v robinson and don't forget to follow the podcast at gh L podcast. Ashley, real quick, um, you know, because we're going to have a discussion at the end of the episode. We're going to freak people out by having these little discussions at the end of the episodes mm-hmm. now. Um, we just want to make sure you guys, you know, listen to all the links that we share. Um, what's your favorite uh, Green Lantern costume? Do you have a favorite Green Lantern costume? Who's your favorite? Kyle. You like the crab mask one? Kyle's had several costumes. Do you do you like his original costume the best? Um, I like my favorite Kyle costume is the White Lantern costume with the oh, crab mask. Oh, really? Yeah. Why that one? I just think like, I think that was an Aaron Cooter design costume. I just costume. think he's so beautiful in it. Really? Like he looks like uh, he looks like a shining beacon of hope, which is what he's sort of supposed to represent. Um, yeah, like it's it, the the beauty of that costume just takes my breath away in a way that um, masculine superhero costumes don't usually. Okay. And every time I see it, I just think it's like stunning. I just think he's so beautiful. In cool. It. How about you? Uh, it's the original. It's the Daryl Banks uh, green mask. Um, the Kyle the, costume. The original Kyle that he has now again in the comic books with yeah. black and white. It's inverted and his symbols uh, split in half. Uh, you that, can't knock a Daryl Banks design, It man. is the That's why the parallax design is so mm-hmm. amazing. But his original Green Lantern design is Kyle's best costume. I also really like Kyle's Omega Lantern costume, mm-hmm, which is really cool. cool. Um, yeah, it's really, really, really neat. Um, I also like the second costume that Kyle has that was designed by Jim Lee, even though uh-huh. it has a dog collar. I think it's kind it of a, a it's kind collar. of a neat design, <laughs> which I think is really kind of neat as well. But um, the original Kyle costume is the best Green Lantern costume. I also, if I would give you a second one, mm-hmm. I would say that John Stewart's is my favorite because I like that it just has green on the shoulders mm-hmm. and then it's black all the way down. Um, I also. Um, for a female character, I think the design of Aya in the animated series yes. in her humanoid form, I think, is really, really beautiful as well. It's also mostly white, so maybe right, that's cool. where my bias lies. All right, so that is it for this lesson of Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Long Green Johns Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, why don't you dismiss the class? Class is dismissed and the transition is over. I'm a pilot! <laughs>